listening to Geraldo's radio show yesterday, and you said you had a big announcement, and uh, I was listening, and it, it sounded like it troubled you, but you do not agree with the President of the United States on action in Syria. I absolutely do not. I think that this is fraught with peril for the United States. We are picking sides in a civil war, Steve, where we have no strategic uh, you know, interest in one side or the other prevailing. Uh, the rebels are as rife with monsters as the, uh, as the bad guys. Uh, they are al-Qaeda fighting Hezbollah. Yeah. I mean, why are we picking a side? We're going to commit... Uh, the United States military, and you hear this mission creep. You hear first it was going to be the Tomahawk missiles. Now they're talking B-2s and stealth bombers and B-52s. And American GIs will be flying those air. Uh, this is committing us to a civil right. war where, um, uh, you know, we don't want either side to win. But you know the other side. It's so very, very different people. You, it's, uh, General Keene says the rebels are mostly uh, rebels that we can get behind. You have Senator McCain here yelling at us on Monday. And you also have uh, Senator, uh, Secretary of State Kerry saying that we know who they are and they deserve our support. You see that video yesterday yep. of the rebels, the so-called rebels, lining up the Syrian soldiers they had captured, Shot them in stripping the their shirts, torturing them, and then executing them on camera, bold-faced, invoking religious justification for that murder, that assassination. Those are the good guys. Those are the people we are risking our GIs to help. They, when they take over, do you think that those seven Syrian soldiers are where their, their butchery, their revenge will end? There will be a bloodbath. This is prolonging this conflict. I and you know what, Geraldo? Also, the, the rebels have admitted on, on video that they have used chemical weapons in the past. And there are a lot of people, including Putin, who worries that essentially uh, al-Qaeda is getting us to take out Assad. Uh, Al-Qaeda is framing That's Assad, what you think. so we'll be their air force, Al-Qaeda's air force. We will be. Uh, Ted Cruz said we cannot. And, you know, I don't agree with uh, Senator Ted Cruz on, on uh, many things, most of them, uh, immigration leading the way. But when he says, when he couches it that way, do we really want to be the air force for, al for Al-Qaeda? It is very difficult to deny the accuracy of but that. You're statement. not an Assad fan, right? I, Assad is a murdering pig. He's a he's a person who uses poison. Gas. I'm who the father of five children in Would Iraq. I, I'm the father them. of five children. You see these children dying from this poison gas. It gagged me. It, it makes my skin so, crawl. So would you have been in favor of any kind of military action if the mission was to get rid of Assad? Because some people, I think, are troubled by the fact yeah. that it's just kind of a political cover situation because Obama said the line last year about the crossing the red line. You know, Gretch, there was a moment in time about two weeks ago when we first saw that video, when we first discovered what he had done to those children. The moment was then. We had sufficient strength in the Mediterranean that they could have gotten maybe only one or two destroyers in place in time. Right. Or maybe it could have been a B-2 or a B-52. It should have been a short, short surgical strike showing our displeasure. So you the red line so crossed. Why, we have but why didn't but Obama do that? Because it. Now the mission is creeping. You see it creeping. Why didn't he do you it? See because it he's, bigger done, bigger. He's, he's done the drones. He's done the drones in Pakistan and Afghanistan. Because he lost his nerve. He became indecisive. The military said to him, we're not ready yet. Let us get this asset, this asset. So hot blood cools. Now it is in the, in the sober reflection of the, of the, the next week or the second right. week. Now you talk to your advisors. Well, let's see. We could hit bridge number two. No, hit bridge number three. Oh, uh, what, why don't we hit the airfields? No, the Russians will come and they'll bring in their tractors. Well, now well, I say, I just ask you one thing. I'm so sorry. Picture this. Assad gets hit massively by us. Mm -hmm. Shock and awe. Remember shock and awe. Sure. Gets hit massively. But we're not going to take him out. We've denounced that. So the next day, they line up, the Syrians, the government of Assad, they line up a thousand civilian corpses killed by the United States airstrike. And there's a baby, and there's a mother, and there's a neighbor, and there's a, a, this person and that person. Civilians. And, what's, and, and how will we feel then? Right. How will we and feel? What have human we done? He's going to use human America. shields. And, but here's the thing. Here's the problem with your argument. You probably, if you don't want us to attack, that's fine. But you, you're saying it's okay to have attacked two weeks ago. It, it's either it's a yes the, or no. In the moment, in and the passion.
passion of the moment it was appropriate. But passion. You go like this, I go like that back. Okay, you cross that line, okay, there. But do you know they've Now it's it, over. Do you know what Senator Feinstein said? They have proof that they've used gas 12 to 14 times already. This was just the most massive display. And there's a sense that maybe 70% of the rebels are good and the 25% of the ones on the front of the New York Times. When you have a situation where you have 25% who are dedicated, who are trained, who are hardened in war in Chechnya and in Libya and in Afghanistan, and they are the fighters we have seen article after article, they will displace those who are left less ruthless than themselves. Right. They, as they have in the Middle East, will sure. displace those less fanatically Islamist, less fanatically uh, uh, anti-Western. They will displace those who have the high... The, you're talking about the okay. Sunni shopkeepers yeah. and the college-educated and the so-called secular elite. Those people will fall by the wayside, as they right. always okay. do, in the face so, of the aggression Harald, of the real radicals. I believe that this could be the president's most important decision of his entire presidency. You now have Congress that may vote against this. Looks like they will. And what will the president of the United States do? I am praying, Gretchen, that he heeds, he has, he has chosen to go to the Congress of the United States. He has put the fate of this mission in the hands of the Congress of the United States. He punted. For him... You can characterize it anyway. Let's let's take him for his word. Let's give him all benefit of the doubt and say this was a sincere constitutional move to check with the even though he says he doesn't have to. Even though the, he says he doesn't have to. Having once taken that step and asked Congress for authorization to be denied authorization and to go ahead anyway, I think is I don't want to overstate it. It's it, uh, and, and and say it's a constitutional crisis. It will definitely be. A historic slight to the Constitution of sure. the United States to having gone to the legislative branch of the government I don't think to then do ignore it. their. He their, doesn't their, have it tomorrow. He's not going to get immigration. He's not going to get the fiscal debt done. He'll alienate everybody because he's got Democrats who don't want any part of this. Well, as many, if not more, than Republicans. He can't. He can't govern if he doesn't. If he goes against the rule. I urge the president. This is. I don't want to be naive or sophomoric here. I know the United Nations is a dysfunctional. Body. Right. But this crime was committed against humanity. This was a crime against the world. This was a crime against civilization. We have a United Nations to protect civilization against savagery. Right. Let's go to the United Nations. Maybe China will veto, probably. Maybe Russia will veto in the definitely. Security Council, maybe, or, or definitely. But at least let, has, let us make sure. the case. Let us, let's do our due diligence before we take a step that there's no such right. thing as a short, sharp hit yeah, anymore. They, they call about a, uh, refer to it as a pinprick. That's, that's crazy. Why, though, Geraldo, do you think that in this particular case, chemical weapons is suddenly a red line, whereas so many people have been killed by so many other different methods of warfare and you torture? You have to draw the line someplace, Steve. What, what ha since World War I... But uh, the president did not draw the red line. He said the other Yeah, thing. well, he drew the red line. But I, I, I agree with the red line. I think that society cannot allow... So we have to enforce Some things it are so noxious. So how can you not but enforce it? But it is not our job to be the sole so enforcer. One then we can't have a red the line. Then, 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 then let's not have a the red line. The red line is the world's red line, Brian. That's the point. They don't think it that way. We're the only sober people in the world, sadly. This is not between us and Syria. How did it become between us and because Syria? Because we have to be the world's Saudi Arabia? Star. We've sold them all those F-16s. When are they going to use them? Right. Turkey, one of the great regional powers, a NATO power. Where, Turkey borders Syria. Where is Turkey? In this. What about Jordan? What about the Gulf Wait, states? Why isn't the president asking and that? Trillions of dollars. Those are all, those are all exactly. great points. Those are exactly. all great points. But what about the people who say, if you let Syria get away with this, just playing devil's advocate, if you let Syria get away with this, and that sends a message to North Korea, that sends a message to Iran. You don't let Syria and you don't let Assad get away from it. You declare him an international fugitive. Everyone in his hierarchy is now an international war criminal. Every member of his family is now an international war criminal. Every bank account he has in every bank in this world sure. is now seized by us. We ask his ambassador, we demand of his ambassador in Washington, D.C., get the hell out of this country. You make of them a pariah. Right. You can do it. Right. If the world cares so deeply about sure. this, then let but the world... 
even without committing their military, punish right, him uh, in a way that China and Russia will fulfill our that gap. Our military is exhausted. I'm they exhausted are. from covering the war. Twelve times in Iraq, twelve times in Afghanistan. I'm done with it now. The, these soldiers of ours, our Marines, our airmen, right. our Coast Guardsmen, our sailors, exhausted. Geraldo, we hear you loud and clear.